Hey everyone, and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, this is a continuation of our previous character controller tutorial, uh, where we went over creating a character controller with, the, with Unity's new input system and creating a state machine. Uh, this tutorial is specifically going to go into how to add additional states, uh, specifically a jump state. So this is just basically an overview of how you're going to add additional states into your state machine and allow that to interact with the player. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first thing you're going to do is open your character input. Um, and we're going to add a new action here and call that action jump. And we're going to bind it to a button. So click the no bind where it says no binding. Open this path, click listen, and press your space bar. And that's just going to tie the space bar to our jump action. We're going to press this plus button under interactions. Click the press. And now we have a new press interaction. We'll just leave that as press only. Go ahead and click Save Asset and close that window once it's done saving. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our character map script. So open that up. So this is what it looks like. We're going to add a new function in here called private void on jump. And this is going to tie directly to our new jump action that we just created. So go ahead and type that in. And first thing we're going to do is debug log out value dot is pressed. And this is just going to tell us a true or false. Hey, was was our button pressed? So now let's go ahead and open our project. And we're going to open our console. Press play. And now, if we press the spacebar, we should see true popping up in the console. Perfect. So that means that our on jump function is working correctly. The next thing that we're going to do is uh, now that we have our on jump being accessed, right, uh, we're going to create a new state. So if you open up your states folder, uh, we have our player false state, idle state, and walk state, uh, and our player base state. Uh, we're going to create a new state in this folder. So create a new C sharp script and name that player jump state. And go ahead and open that folder or that file, excuse me. So we're going to open that file. Uh, so it just gives us the basic mono behavior file. Uh, we don't want this file specifically, right? Because we're going to, this one is also going to inherit from player base state. Uh, and so let's go ahead and go to our player idle state file and just copy that and then go back to your player jump state and you're just going to paste over that entire state there. So we're going to get some red errors here. Uh, the reason is this uh, the player idle state name already exists. So we're going to go ahead and delete idle here and we're just going to type in jump. And if you have debug logs, you can go ahead and rename those now. So enter jump state, exiting jump state. Okay. And uh, we're going to just delete everything that's in our up update state for now. Uh, so this is the state that's going to actually manage all of our jump functionality, right? Uh, and so we'll go ahead and leave that for now. We, uh, we need to be able to access our state from anywhere. So if you go to your player variables, if you remember, we have this region here for concrete states. Uh, we already have one for walking, idle, and falling. We just need to add one for jumping. So public player jump state equals new player jump state. Perfect. So now we can access this jump state from anywhere. Uh, so how do we actually enter our jump state? Well, in our character map, uh, go ahead and navigate back to your character map.cs file. And in here, we have our on jump function, which we created. We're actually just going to, uh, we want to call our switch state. And we're going to pass in our new jump state that we just created. So now what this is saying is, hey, when you press the space bar, go ahead and just switch right into our jump state. Um, and let's go ahead and actually add in an if statement here because there are certain states that we don't want uh, we don't want to enter our jump state if they're already being performed, right? 
Like for example, if our current state is already jump state, we don't want to be able to jump again and again, or else you know we're going to have our player jumping infinitely. Uh, so let's just do if current state does not equal jump state. Um, and we also want to check to make sure that our current state does not equal falling state because we don't want to be we don't want to jump if we're already falling, right? Um, so if current state does not equal fall state, falling state. So if, if it doesn't equal jump state and it doesn't equal falling state, then perfect, we can jump. Go ahead and switch states to jump state. Okay, perfect. So now uh, let's go ahead and test to make sure it's actually accessing our player jump state. It should give us an enter jump state at this point when we click the space bar. So let's go ahead and try that out. So we'll click the play button here. I'm just gonna clear our log real quick. And now if I press the spacebar, perfect. It is exiting idle state and enter jump state. So now in our player state manager in the update, uh, we also, before we switch to like our falling state right away, we wanna check to make sure, okay, are we not jumping, right? Um, so let's go ahead and add a new, uh, a new check here that just says current state does not equal jump state, perfect. And uh, we want to just do and here. So now we have current state does not equal jump state and doesn't equal falling state and the controller is not grounded. Okay, then it'll switch to falling state. Next thing is we're going to actually add some code uh, to perform our jump. Um, I didn't want to spend too much time implementing a very complex jump uh, when that's something, you know, that's very specific for each person's game. Um, and so we're just going to stick with this. But this is a basic concept. Once you kind of have the idea of how to add this state, uh, it should be a lot easier to go and find code somewhere else or, or you know, look up tutorials on how to do a really good character input jump. And you should be able to do something very similar uh, that you'll see out there with this, with this method. So first, we're going to access our player move vector. And we want to get the Y value. And we're just going to add a value. And let's go ahead and create private float up here and we'll just call that force this is going to be the force that we're going to apply to uh, to our our y value so now we're just going to do a plus equals force so that's just going to say okay for each update state uh, we're just going to add 0.1 to the to our move vector so then all we're going to do is check hey is player dot move vector oops move vector uh, dot y greater than or equal to and we want to have like what what are what is our max force right so we'll do private well we'll do student int max force so what is our max force well let's just set it to five um, and this is what it's saying is once uh, the player move vector is greater than or equal to our max force we want to switch into our falling state. So max force. Okay, perfect. Now we're just going to do player dot switch state. And we want to switch into our falling state. Oops, we want to do player dot falling state. Oops, okay. Can't type right now. Okay. All right, so now all this is saying is okay, perfect. If uh, player dot move vector dot y is greater than or equal to our max force, we're going to switch into our player falling state. Perfect. And then at the very end here, we just wanted to call our player move value uh, because it's uh, it's not even going to affect our move vector at all if we don't have our our actual move value being called. Uh, before we leave our jump state, uh, we want to set our player move vector y. A value back to zero. So we're going to do player dot move vector dot y is equal to zero. And now when we come in here, we press the play button and let's see how this works. Okay, perfect. So if we press the space bar, we can see that we're jumping, we're going into our jump state. Perfect. Uh, as you can see, like the jump is kind of jarring, like right as it reaches that value, it's going to shoot you back down. Like I said, there are definitely better ways to do this. This is definitely not uh, like 
specifically a jump tutorial. Um, I would recommend doing something else for your jump, but I mean, this is basic functionality. It does work. Um, and this is the concept of how you can add a jump or any other type of interaction or any other type of state into this state machine. So anyways, guys, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. And if you want to see other videos like this one, uh, please subscribe because I'll be doing a lot more tutorials and a lot more fun videos and devlogs and all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, if there are any ideas you guys have, also let me know in the comments because I would be happy to do whatever type of video. It's just fun for me. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.